إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد Indeed, all praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His aid and His forgiveness. We believe in Him and rely upon Him. We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and refuge against the evil of our own souls and against the evil of our impious deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever is misguided, none can guide him except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we testify and we bear witness to the fact that there's no one worthy of worship except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is alone without any partner. And we also testify and bear witness to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's last messenger and his perfect worshiper. My dear respected brothers and sisters, before the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the world was scattered into little pockets. Arab tribes were constantly in war. Sometimes they'd go to war for 40 years at a time and if you try to trace back the roots of the conflict, it was because one tribe's horse beat another tribe's horse in a race, and they'd go to war. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and united these people under the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah. That there's no one worthy of worship except for Allah. And the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Messenger of Allah. This is the most important thing in that society. And the most important thing in this dunya. The Prophet وسلم, he formed a society out of those people who had been in pockets and going to war, were Bilal the African, Suhaib the Persian, Salman the Persian, and Suhaib the Roman were all together as brothers. And he gave them position and status, not based on the color of their skin, not based on their tribal affiliation. But he gave them position and status based on their qualifications. And he taught us as well that we need to have this love for one another, this concern for one another, and this hoping of goodness for one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us all to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not become divided. And remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies and He brought your hearts together and you became by His favor brothers. And then He goes on to say, وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَاءَ حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَانْقَذَكُمْ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ and you were on the edge of the pit of fire and He saved you from it. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear to you His ayat and His signs so that you may be guided. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized the importance of us being united as an ummah and being concerned about the affairs of the Muslim ummah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم وتعاطفهم مثل الجسد إذا اشتكى من عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the example of the believers in regard to love, in regard to affection, in regard to feeling like a fellow feeling for each other and their concern for each other is like that of one body. When any limb of it aches, any part of it aches. The whole body stays up because of sleeplessness and fever. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, The believers to one another are like a strong building. They reinforce each other, they strengthen each other. And he said, And he ﷺ did this to show the strength that we have together as a Muslim ummah. As we know, there are many conflicts occurring in the Muslim world. One of the conflicts that I want to focus on specifically today in this khutbah is what's happening in Syria, in Al-Ghutbah. Because this has escalated within the past couple of weeks. 
And why is this important? Because we as Muslims, we have to care about the affairs of the Muslim Ummah. How can we care about each other? And how can our Iman be complete if we ignore these things? As we know, we all know the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that a person's Iman will not be complete until he loves for his brother, when he loves for himself. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when talking about the orphans, He tells us, think about how you treat them. Because it may be a situation where you left behind or you leave behind children. So consider those children left behind as you would consider or want your own children to be taken care of. We know in Huta, it is an area, it's in eastern Syria, which is smaller than Chicago. And hundreds of airstrikes, surface to surface missile attacks, and artillery bombs have rained down. At least 400 people have been killed and 1,800 injured. There is a sense, when you talk to these children and you talk to the people from there, there's a sense that the world has deserted Syria. People are like, you know, this conflict started in 2011, they become desensitized. Oh, something's happening in Syria? Something new happening in Syria? So they themselves feel that the world has abandoned them. It's so heartbreaking to see little children saying, at least in Jannah, we'll have food. At least in Jannah, we know that Allah cares. So this is something that should affect each and every one of us. One quarter of the population are refugees, and 6.1 million people are internally displaced. Cities have been destroyed, and chemical weapons have been used more than 180 times, <coughs> according to the Syrian Network for Human Rights. The UN reported that 15 Syrian refugees trying to cross the border were found frozen to death in northern Lebanon, and three of them were children. And the countries that are bordering have closed their borders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to do something about this. The minimum that we can do is make dua. In eastern Huta, over 220 civilians killed and 800 injured in 48 hours. This has been the deadliest week in a number of years. At least 20 children were among those killed by shelling and airstrikes. Some of them were saying, and the hospital directors that are there trying to help, say these are the worst days of our lives here in Wuta. We have been getting hit by airstrikes for more than five years, and this is not new to us, but we have never seen anything like this escalation. He also said that hospitals have been hit and now are out of service. The Syrian people have left their homes and are in need of aid. They are in urgent in need of emergency relief, food, shelter, and medical care. And this is something that we have to consider. You know, why did the escalation occur right now in these times? Because a lot of people have become desensitized. Oh, that's been happening for a long time. What's new? May Allah protect us all. You know, one of the things I just want to emphasize and reflect on is why were the Sahaba radiallahu anhu so close? Right? And we know that the Prophet وسلم, said that I can pay back the favor of everybody except for Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The only thing that I can do is make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he repays Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu on my behalf. I want to give you one example of the love that Abu Bakr radiallahu had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the reason that I'm saying this is because if we truly love people, then we love those things that are dear to them as well. So we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, in spite of being the greatest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had limitations. So one of the things that the Prophet ﷺ could not do was guide his uncle Abu Talib. So even when Abu Talib was on his deathbed, during his last breaths, the Prophet ﷺ went to him and told him, Oh my uncle, say La ilaha illallah, so I can testify on your behalf in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And during that time, there were three people around Abu Talib. And one of them was Abu Jahl. 
And there were two others. All three of them were encouraging Abu Talib to stay on the religion of his forefathers and not to say, La ilaha illallah. So what happened? Abu Talib died in that state. And it's a qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that two of those people, Abu Jahl died in that state as well. Two of the other companions, they actually ended up accepting Islam. Although at that time, they were discouraging Abu Talib from accepting Islam, they ended up accepting Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time revealed an ayah, it's from Surah Qasas, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ أَعْلَبُ مِنْ مُحْتَدِينَ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot guide those that you love, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whoever He wants, and He knows best who is deserving of guidance. And that gives us all hope, all comfort. Because there are sometimes within our families, within our loved ones, that we do have conflict. And that's not necessarily our fault or their fault. Sometimes it's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did his utmost to help his uncle. But tawfiq and hidayah comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So move on approximately 10 years. After the Fatah of Mecca, there was this old man who came to the Prophet sallallahu to accept Islam. And when he came to the Prophet sallallahu to accept Islam, the Prophet sallallahu recognized him and he said that I should have gone to him. And this person's name was Abu Quhafa. He was the father of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, no, you're the messenger of Allah that you are, he's more deserving to come to you. you. He should come to you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, from our faith is that we honor the elderly. So I would have gone to him. So Abu Quhafa, at that time, he accepted Islam. <coughs> and Abu Bakr radiallahu started crying. And subhanAllah, when you think about this, this is something that blows my mind, of the love that Abu Bakr radiallahu had for the Prophet ﷺ. Many of the scholars commenting on this, there's actually a narration from Abu, from Abu Bakr anhu, where he said that he was crying for two reasons. One, that his father had accepted Islam in this elderly age. Number two, he's saying that he knows how much the Prophet wasallam wanted Abu Talib to accept Islam. And he said, I would wish that Abu Talib had accepted Islam rather than my own father because I know that would have pleased the Prophet ﷺ more. When you love someone, you care about those things that are dear and precious to them as well. And this is something we need to work on as a Muslim Ummah. I'm not Syrian. I don't come from a Syrian background. But as a Muslim, as a human, I should be concerned and care about what's happening to my brothers and sisters in Syria. Until we try to help them, make dua for them, support them, then all of this talk we talk about being one ummah falls short. Because it's not about our words, it's about our actions. And it's important to show how the Prophet ﷺ gained the love of the companions. That when they said, may our mothers and our fathers and our lives be sacrificed for your messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they meant it. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, there's many things that we can do. First and foremost, make dua. Make dua. We never know. Remember, this is something that sometimes during these type of situations people forget about. Whenever a person makes a dua, as long as it's not something haram or cutting the family ties, one of three things happens. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua. Number two, there's some bala or difficulty or hardship that was going to come to a person, but because of that dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes that away. And number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps that dua and He gives us something better. So never, ever lose hope in dua or never be mustarij, never be hasty because shaitan wants us to be hasty saying that I made the dua, I made the dua, it's not answered so I'm going to stop making dua. Never stop making dua and never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Another thing we can do is call our leaders, our, our governmental representatives, and talk to them. What's going on? What is the position? Also, amplify the voices through social media. You know, our children, they use uh, social media for everything. This is what I had for breakfast, this is what I had for lunch, this is the clothes I'm wearing. Tell them, right? Rather than telling them, don't do this, you're wasting your time, help them use these platforms effectively. Just have hashtag save Guta, raise awareness, link articles to people so people know. If I ask, if you ask the majority of people, and sometimes even in our own communities, in our own families, the big yes, something's going on in Syria, but I didn't know why are people talking about it now? Hasn't it been going on for a long time? So when you want to raise that awareness that things have escalated, make a donation. Uh, distributing their organizations distributing food kits, reducing food insecurity, providing psychosocial support to children, offering critical services to survivors. And also, they're trying to just, uh, you know, try to make things better. You know, one of the things that we can do is if we can't make things, com remove the harm completely, at least we try to make things better. Inshallah, tomorrow, on March 3rd, inshallah, at 4 o'clock at Mecca Center, there will be a event, prayer and solidarity rally for Ghulta, we invite all of you to attend. Invite your neighbors, invite whoever you know, just to raise awareness about this, that what's going on? What can we do? And to show that we care, right? If you take a little kid that's talking about, right, she or he or she might rather die because they feel like the world has abandoned them. If they hear, alhamdulillah, we got together, we stood up, we prayed, we made dua, we gave a khutbah on this issue, that will at least let them know that your brothers and sisters care about you. You're in our minds, you're in our hearts, and we're making dua for you. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He eases the suffering of people all over the world. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He opens our minds, opens our hearts. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He does not test us beyond our capabilities and He forgives us for anything that we've done intentionally or unintentionally. <laughs>